Hey everyone, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Happy Thursday. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be getting started in just about a minute. We're gonna wait for a few more students to join us. Um, yeah, feel free at this time, grab a snack. Uh, you can chat uh, in the chat box. Let us know who you are, where you're from. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us and we'll start in about 60 seconds. Hope everybody's doing great today. Today is Thursday. They say Thursday is the new Friday. And so we're excited to have you all. We're only one day, day away from the weekend. Um, yeah, I guess we could begin now. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Jonathan April. I'm the general manager of College Greenlight. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. I have been with College Greenlight since it was an idea back in 2012, so for a while now. Thank you for being here and being part of our nationwide community supporting first generation students on their way to and through college. We are thrilled that this week we've had two events from Gettysburg College. This is number two. And so we're really excited about this event. Um, we're especially excited to have Gettysburg here because Gettysburg has such been, been such a great champion of access over the years. That really means a lot to have uh, Gettysburg on our, on our stage, not only once, but twice this week. Today, we have a wonderful event for you all. Um, we have a one hour blocked for today's event, approximately 45 minutes for the workshop and 15 minutes for questions. Don't be shy. Uh, ask any questions that you have in the ask a question box. Uh, you can always chat in the chat box. Um, and then there are a few polling questions in the polls question also at the bottom. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to the Gettysburg team to get us started. I'm gonna pass it over to our friend, Daryl. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you to the Greenlight community right. for having us. Really, what today is about is this. I know that so many colleges talk about diversity, they talk about access, they talk about all these things dealing with how to get in and how all the opportunities are. But we decided to take it to a whole different level on you. So what we're gonna do is talk about what it's like to be you, but then to actually become a member of a corporate suite. So. I'll do introductions in a section, second, but who we have here today is Troy Datcher, who is a member of the class of 1990 at Gettysburg College, who is Senior Vice President and Chief Customer Officer of Clorox, a brand that you all know. He's been an amazing person to have in Gettysburg's community, and he's going to talk to you about how you get from where you are now to where you need to be. And then we have Dr. Darian Davenport, Assistant Vice President of College Life and Assistant Secretary to the Board of Trustees, who also does several other things in the sphere of really keeping Gettysburg students successful. And I'm Daryl Jones, Senior Associate Director of Admissions and Coordinator for Multicultural Admission at Gettysburg College. So I'm going to be silencing myself and coming on at the end. Troy and Doc have lots of great things to say to you, but again, thanks so much for joining us today. So Doc and Troy, take it away. All right. Am I in? Okay. There I am. Sorry, yeah. folks. All right. I was having some issues there. Um, so it, it's a privilege to be able to share some information on somebody that, that I um, definitely look up to um, here at Gettysburg College, just overall 
uh, Troy Datcher. Troy was twice named the Ebony uh, Power 100, most recently in this year, 2020. Um, and out of that recognizes influential change agents, thought leaders, and titans of their industries, including artists, business leaders, activists, and philanthropists. And as, as Daryl shared with earlier, um, you know, Troy's background at Clorox and everything that he's done. Um, this next sheet, before I pass it off to, to Mr. Datcher, just really gives, it's a, it's a visual of just the, the power and expression and just um, the participatory power that Mr. Datcher um, provides. So with that, I'll transfer it over to Mr. Datcher to really talk about what you're seeing on your screen right now. Now, Darren, you first have to stop calling you Mr. Datcher. Let's get that. <laughs> uh, if we're going to have a good time here. But hey, uh, I want to just uh, first uh, thank you all for allowing me to be here. Um, you know, college screen. I love love the 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 mission of your organization. Um, you know, I, I'm I was a first generation student, uh, college student for my family, and it was these types of programs that allowed me to uh, take a peek into the future to see what was possible. So I, I applaud all the great work, and I, I appreciate uh, spending some time with the group. I thought I'd just take a second on this piece just to give folks a little grounding on who I am. And if you look at this page, I kind of broke it up into three sections. The first one is really, uh, think of it as um, the experiences that shaped me. The second kind of group of, of, of images you see there are the people that I associate myself with and kind of hang around. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And then third, it's the, the, the things that I love most and keep me grounded. So at the beginning, at the top of the page, you'll see there um, front and center, uh, is, you know, I was born in Alabama, a small town, thousand people, one track, for like two policemen. Um, I dare you to find it on a map. And if you do, um, everyone in the town is likely my cousin. So it's one of those places. Um, I left uh, Alabama to go to Gettysburg College. It was really the, the, the best decision I made. Uh, it, it really, in my life, it changed, it changed my life. And, and I, I'll share more about that as we get into questions. But I had a, my first job out of college was at Procter and Gamble that really shaped my business thinking, and I actually took a hiatus from business uh, from traditional consumer packaged products goods business, and I went and worked in NASCAR, uh, and uh, and and now I'm back uh, at Clorox. But uh, those those experiences really were, were uh, pivot points in my life that really shaped who I am today, uh, and Gettysburg being at the center of that. So the people that I kind of hang out, hang out with are in the middle there. The Executive Leadership Council is an organization that touts itself as being uh, the top 500 black business leaders in the US. Um, our mission really is to diversify C-suites uh, in corporate America and, and put people of color on boards. And I'm proud to be a member of that organization and proud of its, its mission and what we stand for and the opportunities we create for folks. Uh, Darian mentioned the Power 100 thing. It's kind of a trippy situation to be on the Ebony Power 100. Um, I was sharing Daryl and, and Darren as we were preparing for this session. You know, I was at a, a, the first awards banquet when I was staying to the list a couple of years ago. And, you know, to have your name kind of sandwiched between Beyonce and Prince are kind of, it's kind of trippy. But, um, you know, the good news is the folks at Ebony try to recognize some, some normal, some people, kind of everyday people. And I've been fortunate enough to be a part of that list. Uh, twice in the last uh, several years. And then there's a list that I really I work hard to, to try to maintain my position on every year. And that's the Savoy Magazine uh, list of, of top influential black business leaders in corporate America. And I've been named to that list the last uh, four years running. So I'm, I'm really excited about that being on that list because um, it, it one, I, I know that I'm doing some things right, not only personally, but also giving back to the community and making sure I'm having a, an impact on others. Um, and so if you move to the bottom of the page, I love music, won't get too much into that, but I DJ, you know, here in my basement, um, can't, I don't have enough time to get out to the clubs anymore as much as I used to. Uh, but uh, I actually started DJing at Gettysburg College and uh, I actually still DJ a little bit today. So um, I put a mix together and share with the world at some point uh but uh yeah that's that's part of who i am love spending time with family and friends i think we're going to talk a little bit about the journey here darian i don't know if you had a question or you wanted me to jump right into it 
Could just jump right into it. Yep. I can do. Right. Yeah, well, you're good. Jump right into it. Well, um, so the, the question here is like, how do I, uh, how did I actually land at this liberal arts college? I'll tell you, um, I, I didn't know much about uh, liberal arts institutions until I started the, the college search. What I did know at the time, though, is I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. Like I, I while I was I was facing this really big moment of choosing an institution, I actually didn't have a plan. Like I didn't, I wasn't that kid who woke up and said, I want to be a doctor one day, like, or I'm going to be a lawyer. Like I actually had no idea what I really wanted to be. And I think that's that's true for a lot of first generation students is you may not have a really good um, understanding of what it is, but that was great because uh, I got to Gettysburg, I tried a whole lot of things because the liberal arts education is very diverse and allows you to kind of find the sweet spot. So I ended up becoming a political science major. Uh, and you'll uh, you'll probably ask the question, what does that have to do with business? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but it, it, it made me a really good critical thinker, which I think is really important in the work that I do today. Um, so I chose Gettysburg because of its, its, its really um, diverse, uh, curriculum that allowed me to kind of search to find out like what was interesting to me. The other th reason I chose the institution though is because uh, it was it was a small institution. You know, at the time it was two thousand students. I came from a town of a thousand people. I'm doubling the population of my hometown by coming to this institution, and I needed to be in a small pond. Um, I wanted to know my my professors because in high school I had a relationship with my teachers. And they were so instrumental in my development. I had a, a personal relationship with the coaches that I played on those teams for. So I couldn't imagine going to an institution where I'd be one of a thousand students in a class and not have that personal relationship. And there's something about accountability when you're in a classroom with 14 people and the teacher knows your name. They know when you're there, they know when you're not, they know when you're engaged, they know when you're not, they know if you're having a good day or a bad day. And so that's, uh, that's why I chose it. Um, you know, some of the steps I took to become a leader on campus, um, you know, it all started with this phone call from my mom. Uh, I was uh, really miserable, homesick, 800 miles away from home. Uh, back then, believe it or not, there were no cell phones. So, you know, I was standing, you know, had to call my mom from a pay phone. And the challenge was, uh, she, challenge she issued me was to get involved. If you don't like the place, just get involved, try some things and see if you like it. Well, I joined like everything. Uh, and so it actually uh, gave me an opportunity to, to, to really uh, test out my interests. And what I saw is um, an opportunity to, to actually lead. This is a picture of me as a freshman. And you may ask the question, was there not color photography back in 1986? Yes, there were. It was like a color photography. However, this was an artistic version of me back then in black and white. But, but importantly, what I learned is like not that like a freshman. Like as I listened to other people's point of view, I thought, well, my point of view is just as strong as theirs. And so I, that's how I started to jump into leadership positions really early on, is that I had an opinion and I wanted to make a difference. And that's the way I got a chance to do that. And I, and I think just to, to add to that, you know, the important piece, especially when you look at schools like the Gettysburg College um, in the private liberal arts tradition is is talking, you know, speaking of what Troy's interests are, are having the vessels to actually be able to do that. So whether it's through athletics, whether it's through leadership programming, structured leadership programming through departments, um, or as a lot of you will find out when you go to college, um, student organizations, you know, so many student organizations, whether they're established student organizations or student organizations that you actually want to create yourself. Um, you know, there's a level of entrepreneurship that kind of plays into this too, right? So those are, those are things that you'll see, you know, as you start to really pursue and look at higher ed institutions, you want to look for those opportunities to lead. Um, what better place to really kind of um, channel that energy, but also to be honest, make mistakes, uh, to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes than to do it um, in a college setting. So I'll, I'll pass it back to Troy, but I wanted to add that piece to it. No, you know, I think, you know, as you're as you're contemplating the college that you'll choose, say looking at the list of activities that they have that allow for leadership positions, uh, I think is really important. And as I evaluated Gettysburg, it just had this laundry list of opportunities um, to choose from. And, um, you know, I, what I know as I hire 
uh, folks from college campuses today, I'm looking for people not that are members of clubs, but people that are leading clubs, the people that are leading um, organizations on the campus, whether that's sports or whether that's, you know, you know, student government or whether that's, uh, you say, image of me here at the radio station, like, you know, in, in a uh, role where I was serving as a leader within, uh, you know, the management team at the radio station that we had on campus. I was always looking for those opportunities to, to, to show some leadership. And to Darren, your point, it's a low cost way to try out your leadership profile. Like, I mean, you're not going to, you know, there's a lot at stake right now at Clorox. If I were to make a mistake, there's a there's several billions of dollars that, that I get put at risk. Uh, when I'm running the Black Student Union and my budget's 600 bucks, you know, you can make some mistakes, but you're not going to sink the ship. So it was a really good opportunity, uh, you know, to really test out uh, my leadership style and the things uh, that that I carry with me today. You know, this this question comes up and, and earlier you spoke to it, uh, Troy, with some of the coaches. Um, we can go back some of the coaches. But, you know, when, when you look at opportunities that were important, not only who are some of the people, but how important was it to connect with different people, whether it was faculty, administrators um, to be able to connect with those folks and, and help them develop or shape yourself as a leader? Yeah, you know, the connections are so critically important. And there were connections I made to the folks that were uh, part of the media campus community. And there's folks that were a bit extended outside of that that I think were really critical for me. Um, you know, I, I talked about the, the, the relationship with professors, you know, um, that those connections were critically important, especially as you're thinking beyond college, uh, all the connections that they have that they can connect you to other people. They're an extension to alumni who, uh, were, pr were prior students. And so there was always this, you know, this connectivity piece was so, so critically important. You know, I, um, while I was on campus, uh, because I was a leader of these organizations, I got a chance to do some unique things. One unique thing I got a chance to do was sit on a committee that was uh, selecting the next president of the college. I was a student representative as a part of the process. Well, I met alum that were uh, Fortune 500 business leaders. And one in particular, a gentleman by the name of Bruce Gordon, who happens to be like the baddest brother on the planet, was, you know, he was an executive at, at, um, at Verizon at the time. He's been, he was also the CEO of the NAACP. He's got a laundry list of business accomplishments. But, you know, making a connection to him when I was 18 years old, I still lean on him today. Today, some 30 years later, that connection uh, that I made when I was a, a, a freshman in college is one that I, 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 I continue to tap into. Uh, and so, uh, you know, these these connections uh, are ones that can be long lasting if you nurture them. But, th you know, the, if you get in the right setting, there's a lot of great opportunity there. And I'm on the board of trustees today at Gettysburg College. And uh, the, the reason I'm on the board today is because of the connections I made uh, 30 years ago with, with people that were, um, you know, that were philanthropists to the college that knew a little bit about me. So when it's time to to look for folks to, to become a part of the board of trustees. My name came up casually in a conversation because of some connection that I made. So uh, those connections are critically important. So next we're, we're gonna take a look at um, things that Gettysburg College does to prepare students. And as, as Troy talked about, you know, um, you know, the leadership opportunities abound, right? But the big piece of that is being able to identify or see what's out there, see what fits you um, as an individual and how you can grow within that. And one of the things, you know, Troy, I wanna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw back out, out there to you too, as we kind of roll through these slides um, is, cause we'll talk about it some as far as opportunities, um, mentorship. How important is it for, for a student to connect with someone or seek some mentorship during their time at college? Well, it's incredibly important. And it was for me uh, because candidly, because I was a first generation college student in my family, I actually didn't have those other connections to, to lean on. So I couldn't pick up my dad, we would phone and call my dad and say, hey, um, I'm meeting with the CEO of this company. Could you, do you have any tips for me? That's not a knock on him. It's just that he, he, was, he didn't have that experience. But uh, I, I've tapped into a, a, a group of mentors that actually could help me there. Um, 
you know, and I still leverage that today. You know, I, I've only been in the, the executive suite at Clorox for the last 15 months. Before I actually interviewed to become a C-suite executive on the team, I actually reached out to other people, my network uh, of folks that had done that work, uh, had done that before. So I mentioned the people I look up to like Bruce Gordon or tapping into the organization I mentioned on the very first slide, the Executive Leadership Council, finding those mentor relationships so people can help paint the picture. Well, what does it feel like to be in that situation? What kind of questions should I anticipate uh, based off your experience? Uh, having a, somebody who's has been there, done that, seen it before, was critically important. And I, I'd, I'd say for folks that are listening today, you know, find those folks that can can help uh, connect the dots for you between the, where you are today and where you want to be. Great, great. And you know, the, the slide before transition into a little bit of the Office of Multicultural Engagement. You know, um, we talk about success and what helps to to build success. I, I'll tell you this through the context of um, Gettysburg College. And I think that you are seeing it in real time here uh, with Troy Datcher. Uh, you know, uh, we we really infuse success from day one. So from the time that you are thinking about coming to a Gettysburg College, to having conversations with someone like a Daryl Jones, to getting a visit, um, to come into campus to start classes, going through orientation, we start to infuse um, success from the beginning. Um, I have, you know, I'm first gen as well, um, you know, and I, I wear that as, as a badge of honor. You know, I've had the chance to work um, at the college for the last four and a half years now, primarily working with the Office of Multicultural Engagement. And again, for someone that, you know, that works with various diverse communities, one of the biggest things that we try to do is, is set people up for success. And a lot of what we do is structured through this concept of mosaic, which is a very broad and vast concept that I would take up the last 40 minutes of our day really discussing it. But but to really try to try to condense it into, a, a, I guess, a value, we want to make sure that students who come to our campus feel valued, they, they feel powerful, they feel like they are the best version of themselves, and we'll help them keep that and navigate G Gettysburg College and get out and become positioned like someone like a Troy Datcher. Um, so when you think about it, you know, Troy talking about things that he was able to do during his time at Gettysburg College, those things continue and exist today. They've just been grown or expanded in different ways to be able to engage different populations. Just to give you a quick snapshot of some of the opportunities that we provide through the Office of Multicultural Engagement, uh, we provide first year mentoring as well as upper class mentoring for students. Earlier, you heard Troy talk about um, the importance of mentorship. And for us, mentorship can be a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. We understand that there's there's life that happens after 5 or 6 p.m., right, when the, the faculty and administrators leave the campus. But you all are still talking. You all are still growing. So we have mentorship, peer-to-peer -peer mentorship opportunities for students at Gettysburg College. But we also have administrative relationships with students from a mentorship standpoint where you would get a chance to sit down with somebody like myself or Daryl Jones or Tyra and have real conversations and have those conversations that start and talk about life and what you want to do and what your dreams are and what your goals are. And what we try to do is marry that with your academic experience and your co-curricular experience to help shape the leader that you're going to be. Um, that's important. And there are folks that have graduated from years now uh, that I still talk to, I still converse with, that are sharing with me their dreams. And it's nice to just for a little four years, we get a chance to really be a, um, a formative part of their growth. We also have programs. So when you think about leadership and not to get too far down the weeds, but there are different types of leaders. Um, I very much position myself as someone who's a servant leader. I like to help many people. Um, as many people as possible. So we have something like Mosaic Cupboard for those folks who want to give to a cause to help support people or who might need support. And leadership can also be learned by receiving, right? So we provide those opportunities as well. On this page here, um, we speak to a few things such as orientation ambassadors, different program coordinators as far as heritage, on campus, off campus, but again, that goes back to what we talked about earlier 
with leadership, how leadership starts. It can start from day one with us. Um, it can start from the point of being hired as a first year student and being an office assistant. Because what it allows you to do is immerse yourself in the world where you're interacting with student leaders, whether it's Black Student Union or Latin American Student Association or Asian Student, Asian Student Association. Um, you know, you immerse yourself in an environment where you can engage with student leaders or you can connect with faculty, staff and administrators who are in leadership roles at the college and you have a chance to be developed and mentored by them. So again, what we truly believe at Gettysburg College is making sure that mentorship is infused in every aspect of your life and folks have it right. You have it. It's all about how can you take the potential that you have and really align it with your dreams and goals so you can realize it. And and, and again, the, the beautiful thing about having a chance to share time and space, not only with you all, but with Troy and with Daryl, is that you get to see it in real time. Um, this is, you know, Troy's not somebody we just called and say, hey, can you do this thing today for us? You know, we don't know you, but we need your help. Um, Troy has been a leader and, and a leader with our community for years, for years. Um, and with that, hopefully you see through Troy's example, leadership also takes commitment, right? You got to be committed to a place, committed to a thing, committed to a purpose in order to be a great leader. So at that point, because I know, you know, with time, I want to take a pause and we have a poll up. And at the bottom of your screen, you should be able to, to hit some of the poll questions. So the first poll that we have here is, how will success define your personal success? Excuse me, how will you define personal success? Happiness, good health, career satisfaction, the ability to make um, a difference for others. And the other one, I'm gonna have to go to my slide because I can't see it, it's blocking me there, uh, is all the above. So we'll take a moment and go ahead and let folks engage the poll. We see some things coming in. Keep voting, beautiful people. Keep voting. We're checking. I like the, the there's an overwhelming response of the all of the above. I like this crowd. I love it. We also have some folks commenting in the chat. Thank you for the folks commenting in the chat. We appreciate you. Love the participation. Awesome. So this next one, Troy, I'm going to kick this next question over to you. Um, you know, what was your leadership experience at Gettysburg College and why is it important to your work today? Yeah, it's, it was, it was, you know, I probably overextended myself a bit um, in terms of the, the, the all the things I did when I was on campus. Um, I, you know, I actually think that I actually put more time into my activities than I probably did my classwork. I don't know if that's a good formula, but for me, um, it, it is it is the the uh, the practice of uh, you know lead, leadership and the things that uh, encompass are encompassed in that that I really take with me today. So why was it really important? Um, because it actually helped me to shape really my leadership style. So the authenticity that I show up with every day, you know, I was sharing with some folks earlier as we were prepping for this conversation that I was quoting Jay-Z this morning in a meeting with a couple thousand people. Well, I mean, you only do that uh, when you're really comfortable being authentic in a place. And so that I, I, I uh, learned uh, as a leader, authenticity means uh, so much. And um, the other thing is, is um, you know, trying to bring integrity to leadership. And, and candidly, I think you can look, um, you know, whether it's corporations or politics, you know, I think a lot of us would say that we wish there was more integrity and uh, and, and and all of our leaders, and that was a, a really a foundation for how people would lead. And I uh, I learned that integrity was so critically important to get other people to buy into your vision. And so I I try to really uh, lead with integrity every every day. And I will say this about Gettysburg. Uh, before we move on, there was a 
there's an honor code that you have to sign whenever you did an assignment uh, on campus. And I think the honor codes changed a bit, the words have changed, but I actually still remember the honor code today. Um, I won't take up time to recite it, but I can recite it for you. And what that was really about was integrity. When no one else is looking, are you, are you actually, uh, are, you, are you cheating your way there to success or are you doing the hard work? And I think uh, that's really uh, shaped my, my leadership style, that integrity piece of uh, combined with authenticity. Great. Now, this next slide really speaks to, for a lot of folks, the, the elephant in the room, you know, um, with the country being in the midst of uh, COVID-19. Can you talk a little bit about what it means to be a global leader during a pandemic? Uh, what types of things help prepare you? Yeah, you know, first and foremost, you know, um, you know, for those of you who are uh, not as familiar with Clorox, uh, you know, we, we, we've been in, around for 107 years and we built a brand um, that consumers uh, rely on. And in these types of moments where uh, the product has to deliver against the, the claims you're making on that package to make people feel safe um, and provide that protection that they're looking for against, you know, COVID-19, like that's a really um, important and, and critical uh, thing that we, we have to live up to is, is that expectation. And so as a leader, um, what, what I've tried to do is, is to make sure that I'm thinking through our solutions critically um, because we are facing a shortage of supply because of the global demand for products that I'm approaching things with a principal approach. And I go back to what I just mentioned about integrity earlier. So as I'm getting yelled at by customers saying, I want more than my fair share of your product because my consumer needs it, my shopper needs it. I, I, I lean on the integrity that I've established over my, my, my 20 years at Clorox uh, to really to, 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 to help uh, provide the evidence that we're making all the right decisions today because we've always done that. Um, so, you know, my experiences at Gettysburg, you know, prepared me for this moment because all of those leadership attributes I'm putting on are being put on display right now. They're being tested. Um, and so um, I, I, you know, I, I, I think it's probably hard to for people to imagine that a decision you're making as a black student union president 30 years ago shapes something today. But it does because you're faced with decisions then that are principal decisions, fairness decisions, equity decisions, um, and those you lean back on. I made those that decision 30 years ago, and, it, and that was the right thing to do. And I'm making this decision, and the stakes are a bit higher, but it's it's the right thing to do. And I've got experience that would indicate that when I'm doing the right thing, good things happen. One of the great things at Clorox is um, we have a, a, a kind of a, a motto, which is do the right thing. And it really matches up with my own personal philosophy. But to do the right thing is is a, a, akin to that honor code that I, I was signing uh, as an 18 year old, that uh, attesting that I was doing uh, my work the right way. And so um, I'd say all those things add up to uh, you know the situation that we're facing today. Well, now I want to, if I can, put a, a pin in something you said about the experience you had, you know, in Black Student Union. I think sometimes folks uh, don't always realize how much great experience you get during college uh, and how that informs, you know, your professional life. It's just, you know, some folks dismiss it. Oh, that's just college experience, but it actually helps shape who you are as a leader. Um, so I'm glad you said that because sometimes that gets uh, overlooked or undervalued for sure. Uh, how, how did the college make a difference in your life? You know, whether it's through your education, um, how you engage in the corporate space, even being a trustee, how, how did it help you? And then along with that, um, how did it prepare you for some of the challenges that you faced uh, as a leader? Well, I will tell you as a, it's shaped me in almost every way. Um, and I'll, the personal way it shaped me is all of my friends from those days are my friends today. And Daryl can attest to that because he was there. Um, we, I, that's really the, you know, that at the, at the heart of who I am today was that experience. So it gave me my, 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 gr my group of, of wonderful friends. That's first and foremost. Um, but, but also, you know, I think there could be some concern about the drawback of being um, 
not a part of the majority population in some of these institutions. So Gettysburg has done a lot of great work on inclusion and diversity uh, over the last uh, uh, you know three decades since I've been off campus. I'm very proud of the work we've done. But I'll tell you, there was something interesting about being one of uh, a handful of, of black students on a campus of 2,000 people. You know, when I got to Gettysburg, there were nine people who looked like me on campus. And I think it grew to maybe 25 by the time I left. Every situation I'm in today, I am the only person that looks like me in the room. So that in, that environment that I competed in in, in college 30 years ago uh, really prepared me for the environment that I'm competing in today. So I walk in every C-suite boardroom and I, I'm, the, I'm the person of color. I walk into executives uh, meetings with folks like Walmart and Target and you name it, Costco and all these folks that I deal with on a daily basis. And I'm typically the only person of color in the room. Uh, and so that that my whole Gettysburg experience from the classroom to the social aspect uh, all gave me really, I think, a, a really good understanding of how the world works. And uh, and so I bring that with me every day. So I'd, I'd say it's, it's made a significant difference in my life from from all those reasons. And it stressed me a lot, too. Like, you know, the, the education was a rigorous one. Um, I had to do my homework. Um, if I wanted to compete and, 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 and have, you know, uh, and, and actually maintain a good GPA, I had to put in the, the work to, to do that. Um, and it reminds me a lot of the work that I do today. I, I work hard. I play hard too, by the way, but I work extremely hard and I put a lot of, uh, work into uh, being prepared every day. And that preparation, I actually learned from being on campus. So showing up to every lecture, you know, prepared to be uh, to, to engage in dialogue. And actually, that's a difference between like a liberal arts education and some larger institutions. You're expected to engage. If you're sitting in a class of 14 people, the, the professor wants to know your opinion. And here's one great piece of advice. I was meeting is when I got this role. And by the way, I, I didn't say this up front, but what a chief customer officer does is actually I'm in charge of sales globally for the company. So we. We make about six billion dollars a year. My team's responsible for every single penny of that. So I was meeting with the the CEO's um, uh, a coach and mentor, and he said to me, um, "Why do you think he pays you all this money?" And I went through like market share. You know, I got to beat the competition. Blah 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 blah. And he stopped me and said, "No, he pays you for your opinion. So have an opinion." And that's what I had to have when I was a student at Gettysburg. And it, when he's sitting in that classroom talking to the professor and my peers, I needed to have an opinion. And uh, and that and that uh, experience, those four years prepared me actually for this moment because I, every day I need to bring an opinion. No, I'm glad you said that's powerful. Uh, I think, you know, especially folks in, you know, I don't want to speak for, you know, all, all first gen folks. I know for me, sometimes it's hard to find your voice when you find yourself occupying a space that you weren't taught how to occupy. Uh, so I think that's really powerful. Ha have that opinion and use it. Um, all right, good people. We're on our second poll. I think that some folks have already started answering the poll, but the question is, what is leadership? Is it a position or a title or is it your actions? And, and right now we have an overwhelming 100% that says your actions, so keep voting. Um, but that that absolutely is right. Um, that is what leadership is. You know, a lot of folks can can have a title, but how you conduct yourself in that space is really important. Uh, so next, you know, we want to kick this back over to Troy, but advice, helpful tips for students on how to manage challenges. Well, I, I think um, it's what we talked a little bit about this. One is uh, leaning into your your um, support system around mentorship. So leaning into those people who've done it before um, it is incredibly helpful. You know, I, I also found that um, I, I didn't try to solve every problem on my own. And so actually uh, sharing the challenge with other people, allowing people to weigh in, provide their point of view, um, ultimately, it's, it'll be your decision. But I, but you know, I'd say the more people to br you bring into the conversation, uh, the 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 better the outcome's going to always be. 
The other advice I always tell people is um, to be a student of the game, meaning whatever you're doing, like you got to be immersed in understanding it. So I work in this consumer products package goods industry and every morning, whether I like it or not, I need to understand what's happening in the industry. I have to I have to make sure that I'm reading the Wall Street Journal and I know what's happening topical in my industry. So I'd say, you know, mentorship, bring others into the conversation, be a student of, of, of the game, like whatever, uh, you know, um, challenge you're facing um, and those things, you know, you can't go wrong with. And I want to echo the the piece about bringing other people to the game. I think one of the things I learned uh, as I was trying to to find my way through leadership, they you know talked about who's your cabinet, right? Who are your people? Right. Who are the folks that you bring in to help share some of these challenges? So absolutely, bringing folks know into the game. Um, you know, that's one of the things. And, and just next slide, you know, we know that especially um, as you're being you know being students who are high school students looking to pursue college and you're doing this during a challenging time, right? You're doing it during a pandemic. Uh, you're doing it with there's so many things going on in our society from a, a social standpoint. Um, so you you see challenges, but hopefully what that does is just helps to condition you and prepare you for things that will come your way, right? Things that you know, hurdles that you know you can get over, challenges that you know you can uh, rise above um, and prep you. You know, I think that the, the three of us would be dishonest with you if we told you that college is a crystal stairway. Uh, it just, it just, it isn't. So whether it's, you know, being in that class that is is probably harder than you thought it was gonna be or being in a challenging social situation uh, or maybe having an expectation of a result that you don't get, uh, challenges uh, are, are ahead of you. But again, they, they shape who you are, they build who you are and they prepare you for the things that you'll have to engage later in life. And sometimes we don't know when we're going through things in that moment, what they're preparing us for, but they're actually getting us ready. And Troy so eloquently talked about this. It prepares us for the things that we engage with today. Really such an important thing. So our third poll, um, which I know folks have already started um, asking, I'm sorry, answering is what makes you nervous about the college admissions process? So it's the app, finances, making the right choice, or all of the above. And let, let's go down to our results, take a look and see where things are. Um, a lot of folks have all of the above. Um, so I know that, that you know, Daryl's going to share some information later on about the admissions process and hopefully helps to allay some of the nervousness that you may have around that. But, um, you know, understood. I think that, uh, you know, as, I don't, I don't want to speak for Troy. I know as a first-gen student, when I was back in 19, blah, 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 um, <laughs> you know, it, it was all of the above for me, too, um, because I would take things to to my parents who would basically give them right back to me because they, they said, I, I don't know anything about that. You have to figure it out. Um, so it really it made me nervous. But, you know, we, we uh, were able to make it through. And luckily, you know, speaking to the mentorship piece, I had great mentors that helped me to navigate things. So. Next poll question that I know folks have already started to, to answer. Um, even though many colleges and universities have made the ACT and SAT optional, are you still nervous about it? And a lot of folks here, I think most of the, about 85% say yes, about 14% say no. Um, I get it as someone who is not a great standardized test taker, and I've taken the SAT, the MAT, the GRE, and the GMAT. <laughs> I'm still not good at any of them, so I, I understand it. Um, but again, one of the things I'll tell you, and, and I'll, I'll kick it to Troy to give you some advice as well, um, preparation. Preparation is everything. Uh, so if you have access to resources that will help you prep for things such as the ACT or SAT, um, use them if they're at your disposal, because hopefully that will help build more confidence uh, and more skills in that. Troy, I'll kick it to you with any advice for that. Yeah, I'd say, uh, just quickly, uh, you know, I was afraid as well because I was not a good standardized test taker. But, you know, know that the SAT is only one component of your application. Now, Daryl's an expert. He can tell you more about that than I can. But being a well-rounded student, uh, offering, um, you know, that that you're going to they that you are a leader now. You'll be a leader once you get to campus. Colleges are looking for leaders. People like me who are hiring from college campuses are looking for leaders. 
So we did. I know Daryl has a question up. Or do you have any questions? There were uh, a couple of questions. I know that that um, Tyra has been doing a great job of answering some, but this is one directly focused um, uh, directly towards you, Troy. How was the adjustment from Alabama to Pennsylvania, and how did it affect where you lived and worked post college? As far as any connections that you developed, or was there another motivator? And that was from Bennett. So uh, I, I, keep me honest if I'm answering the question, uh, Darren, but, uh, you know, uh, the, there was a big adjustment from Alabama to, to Gettysburg. Um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, the, even the college campus was twice, twice the size of my hometown. Um, but what it w did for me was it, it allowed me to, to understand that I can't adapt. So I, that guy who grew up in a town of a thousand people lived in New York City with eight million people. Um, I live in Oakland, California today uh, with almost a million people. Uh, so like, I think what it taught me that leap from Alabama to Gettysburg actually just taught me that um, it's not so scary. And so, um, you know, and I've made connections. My, my Rolodex is pretty deep. I actually am pretty proud of my Rolodex <laughs> for those kids. And that's just a list of people that know it's not, you know, Rolodex is a piece of paper used to have things written on, but that's, that's old school, but, but know that my, my contact list is pretty deep uh, based on all those places I lived. I lived in, I think 10 U S cities uh, moved around every couple of years. Um, and it's been, uh, you know, it's been a wonderful experience uh, and doing just that, but that Gettysburg to Alabama was probably the biggest leap um, because it was the first time I did it. And once I, saw that it wasn't that scary. I've, I've been kind of leaping around since then. Great, great. And uh, there's a question in here for you, Daryl. Uh, what kinds of students are a good fit for Gettysburg College? Whoever that is is getting hired because we're gonna talk about admissions right now. So here's what I know. I mean, you're going to learn a lot about Gettysburg College because we'll send you things about it. You know, as Troy mentioned, it's a college now of 2,600 students, literally from 40 states and 40 different countries. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that we need people who can understand what it's like to be around people who aren't from their neighborhood, aren't from their city, aren't from their state, or maybe not, not even from their country because we're at a place where, although we have lots of students from New York City, from, I call it Oak Town still, Troy, I can't help myself, but Chicago down here in uh, DC area where I'm from, you know, we're looking for people who can handle the fact that you're near a national park, but in a town that deals with several million visitors from all over the world, but that'll take you to cities to step you outside of your comfort zone so that you can get to and from here. I mean, we've got shuttles that'll take you to different cities, New York, Philly, Baltimore, DC for education, for culture, for career immersion. But we can't offer you these things unless you're the type to take advantage of these things. So it's great to have these transportation shuttles. Also great to have a place that is so great and so many different activities, so many different things to do outside of the classroom. But again, it doesn't work unless you're the type to take advantage of those things. So when it comes to admissions, what I'm already thinking of is what kind of career you might have later. Now, of course, I can't lie to you and say, well, I knew Troy and I knew that he would be this today. I knew he'd be pretty amazing, but think about it. If I'm admitting you, I'm handing you off to my right and left hand, Dr. Darian Davenport, so that we together can make sure you're successful. So that maybe someday, Troy Datcher is one of those 30,000 plus alums who can give you an externship, which is a shorter experience, an internship, or perhaps a career. I have to know that again, you're gonna be the type to take advantage of it. So you might be wondering, why is he talking about all this stuff? Well, here's why. Because admissions is the easy part. When you're thinking about you being the center, your experiences, everything you've done outside of the classroom, 
This thing about metrics, yeah, that's easy. That's easy. You already know your grades matter. We've been test optional for over a decade, so it's not even about that. But your recommendations, what you do beyond the classroom, whether it's caring for family, having jobs, being an athlete, any of those things that we know were disrupted, I have to be confident that all those things you do beyond the grades are going to be things that tell me that if I hand you off to Doc, and Doc and I hand you off to Troy, I mean, this is horribly selfish, but everybody looks good for having made the choice for you. So my job is to find ways to make it you. So it's character, as you've heard from Troy. It's attitude, as you've heard from Doc and Troy. It's leadership. It's the ability to collaborate. It is honesty and integrity. It is authenticity. And we don't find those from any one thing. Those are from your essay and from the virtual interview you'll have with Gettysburg College and from being a collaborator. So put in the chat a little shout out to our colleague Tyra, Assistant Director of Admissions, who is handling a lot of your questions. That's who I look for. So you have to have all of those because that's what makes the difference to me. And believe me, folks. If I'm working for you in admissions, it is an absolute wrap because I don't have to argue with anybody. Show me you have the juice, or as I living in the DC area can tell you from my favorite artists from back in the day, Chuck Brown of Chuck Brown of the Soul Searchers, whatever you do, big or small, do it well or don't do it at all. Now that's an extreme. But at least if you're not going to do it well, try to improve, try to be better, learn, get involved, step outside of whatever your comfort bubble is. That's who I want. As you can tell, guys, I get a little fired up about that. So back to you, Doc and Troy, with questions. But you just hit me where I live, which is I want people to understand it's not a numbers game. It is human. So when you hear people say holistic admission, I want you to change the word to humanistic. Know that game and understand it. Thanks, Daryl, so much. So with that, we want to open it up to you wonderful people. Um, again, I think another question has come in. Let's take a look here. Had a question. Um, Daryl, this kicks back to you. What is a virtual interview? So in the old days, a.k.a. February 2020, Tyra and I and the entire rest of my staff, Courtney Best, who's on the West Coast, would come to where you are to interview you. So I work with students in Chicago and all over the Midwest, Indianapolis, Minneapolis, New York City. Tyra's in Philly. Courtney's going to Oakland and L.A., not just the pretty parts of L.A., but South Central as well which I call just as pretty because it's real. But we cover the nation and everybody on our staff loves to interview. So normally we'd be doing them where you are or we'd be flying you in to do them. Now you do them via these screens that I know one of the challenges is, is you're tired of screen time. But that's the reason why we do these things in the evening or the afternoon or on weekends. You and us, you and I are on a screen together or somebody on my staff is on screen with you and we are not grilling you with questions. We're talking to you about who you are, what you're about and what we can learn about you that we won't get elsewhere. So we love, love having them. And if you're interested in Gettysburg, you should have one because they are enjoyable. Great. Thanks. We do have a couple of minutes left for those folks. If anybody has uh, any questions, Please feel free. Um, again, this uh, is also being recorded. So you may ask questions that other folks definitely want to hear the answers to. So feel free if you have a, we have a few minutes left, please uh, jump up some questions into the, uh, the chat. And I want to give a little advice too to students because we do know the stress that exists out there. Whatever you can do to stay positive, be that. 
Whatever you can do to lift up someone else, do that. Whatever you can do to reach out a hand and literally help somebody either by being a listener or by saying, I'm good at math, you're good at writing, let's work together and help each other. Do that. Because I know this situation, as Doc and I like to say, is a grip. <laughs> right, Doc? For sure. <laughs> it's a grip. But what we love is to see the character, the attitude, the diligence, the guts to say, I'm going to make a positive difference. Remember when we talked to Troy about it, we asked about who has made a difference for him, and he's doing it for others. Doc makes a difference for so many on campus, not just through the Office of Multicultural Engagement, but through many leadership positions. I have the luxury and the privilege of being able to admit people and make sure through Greenlight as an example, that you know we're really aggressive with financial aid so that we cover things like, if you wanna study abroad in some country, we got you. We'll take care of your visa, your passport. We'll make sure the credits transfer. We'll make sure the round trip airfare is covered. I mean, that's a privilege for me. So keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, but stay positive so that you're open to these possibilities. But I wanna thank all of you for tuning in. I wanna thank you, Dr. Darian Davenport, for being great at who you are as a human being and a professional colleague of mine. Troy, for all you have done and all you have become and all you continue to do, I thank you from all of us at Gettysburg College and the entire Greenlight community all of you who tuned in today, please stay positive, keep doing your thing, and much love to Thanks all. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, and 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 thank you, thank you all. I want I want to thank, um, yeah, I want to thank you all. I'm going to second Daryl and thank you, Darian and Troy, and and thank you, Daryl, uh, Troy. You were, I think, you're our first member of the executive suite to be on our stage. Hopefully, not the last. And uh, yeah, I really want to thank you for your participation. Uh, your meaningful words. Um, yeah, for many people, college is a gateway to a career. And so it's phenomenal to hear about um, yeah, all of the learnings that you shared with, with us all. So thank you and thank you to Gettysburg for being such a meaningful partner of ours for, for many years now. And thank you students. Uh, we're now on November 12th. Um, for those of you um, yeah, we're getting into that application season. And yeah, as, as Daryl said, take a deep breath. And uh, you guys are all going to be great. So yeah, thank you all. And uh, yeah, thank you for being part of our community. Have a good night, everybody.